Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Uh, welcome to the College of Engineering and Science. Uh, on behalf of our dean, Katie Snyder, who really couldn't be with us today because she's on the, uh, the dean's conference, her administration, faculty, staff, and students, I want to welcome everybody to this uh, very positive occasion. Today we are celebrating collaboration and cooperation. We're celebrating innovation and creativity. We're celebrating um, philanthropy and generosity. And uh, on the subject of innovation, if you look at the last 100 years, we had a lot of technological innovation that improved life, human life significantly. But if you dig closer, you realize that they're not really born out of the depth of technology, but they were born out of the collaboration or the intersection between technology and liberal arts and architecture and business and health professions, nursing, dentistry. So in here, we practice what we preach, really. Uh, we're very collaborative. Uh, we're actually one of the few universities where we have liberal arts and engineering faculty co-teaching in the same classroom to the benefit of the students. When we document this work, we present it in conferences, everybody asks the question, like, how is this possible? We, don't even, we can't even talk to the liberal arts. And uh, I don't have the answer. I tell them, uh, you know, uh, it's possible at Detroit Mercy, and we're lucky and better for it. So um, today I want to take a little uh, excursion and announce that we can no longer name the pit um, the pit, because this, for a hundred years, this has been the pit. And, 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 now, and now with all the light and color and energy coming through this space, we just have to find another name for it. So uh, please help me welcome to the podium our uh, president, Dr. Edwin Garibaldi. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Reyes. Good afternoon. And good afternoon, especially to Fred and uh, Suzanne Siebert. Uh, Associate Dean Hill is going to speak in a few minutes. And I also want to thank all of our alumni, friends, and guests who are here. And also uh, several members of the President's Council, as well as uh, the academic leadership team, and also uh, members of our Board of Trustees who are here. Uh, this is a very, very special occasion. But I'm pleased to see so many of you have come to join us to celebrate the dedication of this new and wonderful center named in honor of the two benefactors who made it possible, Fred and Sue Siebert. Fred is a... <laughs> Fred is a 1969 graduate of the College of Liberal Arts and Education and received an MBA from the College of Business Administration in 1973. Uh, currently, uh, Fred is now the former president of Priest Incorporated, which is a California-based national defense uh, supplier company that, as I recall, Fred took over the reins as president back in 1991. And until last year, um, uh, he led that, that company before selling it. Sue is also a native of Detroit. And if I can get a little personal here, and I asked about this just to make sure. Um, she, she has been here on this campus uh, before, too. And in fact, she and Fred's first date was at the fountain. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I remember the story. It was a great story. Uh, Sue's a graduate of Cal State Fullerton. Uh, this new Frederick and Suzanne Siebert Center for Innovation and Collaboration, located here in the College of Art, Engineering and Science, has been designed to foster creativity, build community, and encourage the generation of inspired ideas. And most importantly, it will be available to all students in the university. You know, after all, as you just heard me say, Mr. Siebert is the perfect example uh, and model of a well-rounded University of Detroit University alumnus. Uh, he has an undergraduate degree in psychology from the College of Liberal Arts and Education. He's got an MBA from the College of Business Administration, and he's had a very successful career working in the engineering uh, and aerospace industry. That's a versatile Detroit University graduate. 
even though I had to spend much more time convincing the Seabirds to have their name placed on this student-oriented collaborative center, it was very easy obtaining Fred and Sue's financial support for this facility. Uh, that did not surprise me uh, one bit, because from the first time that I met Fred and I went back to check the records, it was almost six years to the day in April of 2013 he met me in Carlsbad, California when I was coming from a higher education meeting and we had lunch. That was our first time. And I knew from the start that he was very keenly interested in our students. Uh, they understood then, and even more so today, how important state-of-the-art facilities are for learning, studying, and working collaboratively when we are recruiting prospective students. And even more, these same facilities are critical to retaining students as they begin to develop new projects and products for their respective majors. And as some of you know, our mechanical engineering and nursing students partnered a couple of years ago to create devices for disabled veterans at the John Dingle VA Medical Center. In the future, the Seabird Center for Innovation and Collaboration is very likely to be the perfect workspace for our students to design and exper uh, experiment with prototypes like the ones that were created for veterans, as well as children and adults with disabilities or impairments. The center has also been configured to be a space where people can come together to create, invent, and learn, and also will assist in the development of students' creative ideas and innovations throughout the university. It will be the setting for the conceptualizations of new inventions, products, and ideas that will be discussed before they become discoveries in science, health, economics, philosophy, business, architecture, engineering, the social sciences, and many other disciplines that we have here. Fred and Sue, I want to thank you very, very much for your generosity in establishing this Innovation Collaboration Center and also for your, your continued support uh, of the university. It's extremely uh, important to them and it's important to us. But I also want you to know that in addition to uh, contributing a very, very significant amount of money in order to make this center possible. Uh, in 2010, the Seabirds established uh, the Seabird Endowed Scholarship, which provides financial support for students, uh, particularly juniors and seniors here at the university. And I've been fortunate to know many of the students who have had those scholarships from the Seabird Scholarship Fund, and they've had the pleasure of meeting some of the students at some of their visits here to the university. And uh, I asked a couple of those students if they might send a little note to Fred and Sue uh, while we're having this program today. And so one of the students uh, who wrote uh, is uh, Christian Williams. You all might remember Christian. And uh, here's just an excerpt from, from this message. He said, I would like to personally congratulate both uh, the Seabirds on having a collaboration room named in your honor. This is very monumental and your support and contribution the current students, as well as alumni, are very impactful. As an update, I completed my BSBA MBA program in 2015 and have been employed by Toyota Motor North America for the last four years. I recently started my own business as well, so I'd like to think that your generous scholarship truly aided me in my abilities to succeed. And he said, smile afterwards. <laughs> I've also had the pleasure of meeting students who were employed over the summer at Fred's company um, in California. And Fred and Sue, they took care of the majority of the housing arrangements so our students could have a very productive summer co-op experience. And as I remember, Fred and I talking about it, some of these students, for the first time in their lives, they were actually getting on an airplane and even going this far away from home. But one of those uh, students was Dominic Berlingieri. And I asked Dominic uh, if he would send Fred a note too. So I'll just read a couple of excerpts from it. And it goes like this. I will forever be thankful for the opportunity Fred gave me as a freshman to intern at his company, Priest, back in 2015. I was a young 18-year-old with zero experience in the business and engineering world, and I couldn't have asked for a better company to learn from. Fred Siebert is still one of my favorite role models. He had a perfect combination of respect, positive energy, intelligence, and hard work ethic. He made sure these qualities were abundant throughout priests, as a good leader would. 
talking with Fred and working at Priest gave me the confidence and drive to complete my engineering degree. Talking with Fred was inspirational, making me realize that successful people are still people at heart. And any one of us, including me, has potential to become something special. Whenever I saw Fred at work, he was always smiling and cracking jokes, creating a positive atmosphere. He was far from the stereotypical boss that many think of. And we will give you the entire message that Dominic, as well as Christian, wrote to you so that you can have it for, your, for yourselves. But today, we've also asked a former Siebert Scholarship re uh, recipient, Natalie uh, Lavity, to say a few words about the impact of her 2015-16 Siebert Scholarship and how beneficial their gifts have been for the students. Natalie is a 2016 Bachelor of Science graduate in biology and is currently working at Bowman Hospital Troy, where she is a medical scribe. And nat naturally, Natalie aspires to be a physician. So Natalie, would you join me and say a few words? Uh, well, as President Garibaldi said, he stole my entire introduction for my speech, so I apologize. <laughs> um, as he said, I was a 2016 graduate, uh, and at, like most students, I had to work full-time while I was going to school. Uh, I had to help pay for school uh, big time. I love my university, but uh, I, I stayed here on campus, and I loved it, so it was, I was responsible for the fees I had to pay to live on campus by, per my parents' rules. So um, so I had to work full-time. I actually had two full-time jobs while going to school full-time, and uh, the Seabirds Scholarship helped me a ton, so it was, it was less of a stress. I could study a few more hours rather than going to work another eight-hour shift or another 12-hour shift. Um, whether it be at the hospital or my work study job. So um, the generosity is un incomparable, and I can't even describe the, the oh, I can't even think of the word. Uh, I can't, uh, it's, I couldn't even be more appreciative for the uh, scholarship that I received from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Siebert. Um, like I said, I was able to focus more on school, and as a prospecting physician, school is definitely <laughs> the biggest focus that you have to for applications and uh, actually, you guys definitely prepared me for grad school um, because I was able to study more and I'm currently in grad school right now, so thank you. <laughs> um, and um, on behalf of the school and all of the other full-time working students, we appreciate uh, your generosity to us as scholarships and towards this room that's a beautiful addition to campus. I haven't been here in four years and it's gorgeous, so thank you so much. And we've asked the youngest member of our faculty, <laughs> Father Albright, a man renowned uh, for uh, the field of science, if he would come and bless this beautiful building. It's my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, I ask all of you to stand for the blessing. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we ask you to smile down upon us this Thursday noontide as we are gathered to formally open the new Center for Innovation and Collaboration. The setting here is in so many ways a wonderful addition to our college and to our university. We ask that you send your special blessing on those who have done so much to make it possible. Frederick and Suzanne Siebert in particular. For the thoughtful generosity, we are, each and every one of us, indeed, most grateful. May this new setting where we are now gathered be a refuge and a center for growth and development. May it inspire us in creativity. May it be a safe place to share ideas to liberate, to liberate competing thoughts and ideas, to broaden our perspectives. It may be a place to develop those bonds of friendship that will sustain us into the future. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing on our benefactors who have led this center into existence. And may your spirit 
which creates all things new, help nourish each of us as well, and inspire us in our learning, so as to serve you and the world about us with ever greater dignity and peace. We ask this, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, bless each and every one of us and the setting which we are now enjoying. Thank you. Thanks so much. We have a little token of appreciation uh, for you. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Peggy say a few words about it because Peggy's the one who really is, is really the architect yeah. behind it. So actually, so it, it is it is our niche and I. We were charged with putting this together, and both of us at the same time said we've seen these awards at the mall, and we've always wanted a reason to use them, and we always thought they were so cool. So. She named the place, and I said, well, funny? That's exactly what I was thinking, too. Um, so they are 3D etchings in crystal, and we sent them a, a picture of this space, and they etched it in the cube of this crystal. And as you move it, you actually see all sides, and it, it changes. Um, so uh, Ardish and I were actually very thrilled, so thank you for giving us the opportunity to finally use these. But thank you for everything. Beautiful. There you go, so innovation. Right there, yeah, right? that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. 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 And then we go off the side. So, Fred, Sue? Thank you, Dr. Garibaldi, uh, Dean Hill, and all the students and faculty here at the University of Detroit Mercy. Listening to all of the things that were said about Sue and I today, uh, I didn't realize they were talking about me. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty heavy stuff. By the way, how about those pistons, huh? <laughs> but I just want to say that Sue and I are very honored to have our names associated with this new learning center. Uh, innovation and collaboration are two concepts that I personally have been involved with for most of the working career, but especially over the last 33 years as head of an engineering uh, firm that uh, designed, manufactured, and distributed products for the aerospace and defense industry. Uh, they said some, Dr. Garibaldi took a couple of my uh, notes as well. I was fortunate enough to have uh, several students come and work for us in the internship uh, out of the College of Engineering here, and they were delightful. I would ask all of my, of course, nobody knew about the University of Detroit Mercy in Southern California, so they would come with their shirts and they'd look very professional young men and did a wonderful job in those early stages of their career development, and those were very thoughtful letters that uh, were sent uh, in regard to Dr. Garibaldi's request. The, uh, for me, it, it, it's quite humbling to be associated with this center um, because when you look at collaboration and, and innovation, um, these are more than just theoretical concepts. Uh, in my career, we used collaboration and innovation on a regular basis during our course of our business cycle. Um, with the introduction of technology, uh, collaboration has gone from being a room with just a couple of people in it to actually being uh, en encompassing groups of people that are together even though they might reside hundreds of miles or even thousands of miles away from each other. Our customer base was worldwide, so we used technology whenever we would have a collaborative session with our customers, regardless of where they were throughout the United States or in Europe or Asia. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the typical process was to get several groups of people together from the customer side and from our side. Again, a very multidisciplinary, yeah, disciplinary, disciplinary? Multidisciplined, I think. Uh, multidisciplined group of people from both our side and the customer side. So you'd have people with purchasing background, manufacturing background, engineering background, quality backgrounds on both sides of these conversations. And uh, the idea through this collaborative session was to use what technology was available. Well, one of the great ones is video conferencing and, and teleconferencing in order to handle these sessions. 
And then um, we would break up into teams at the conclusion of this because a lot of times it depended on what the, the reason for the collaboration was. Sometimes it was problem solving, which was very important, but often it was for the development of new products, and that's where the fun was, the innovative side. So we would, again, within our own company, try to come up with a solution to a problem or to some innovative approach. And uh, after we distilled some brainstorming sessions, we'd actually put these together uh, in a package that we would then get back on the phone via teleconferencing or, or video conferencing with our customers, who frequently were you know, several time zones away from where we were in Southern California. So it, it made it very interesting and uh, particularly advantageous to have the, the ability through collaboration and then to, to take it through to the innovation and the design of new products and uh, new solutions. And my hope here is that um, as more and more students become aware of this particular facility, that they uh, are able to use it and at the very least hone their skills in dealing with diverse uh, disciplines within companies and within countries and within different corporations, all of them maybe having different goals and objectives, because the idea is to come together and produce something, whether it's a thought or it's an actual product. And so with that, I want to thank you again for this wonderful honor that's been bestowed on Sue and I, and I wish well to all the students uh, who have the opportunity to use this center now and in the future. So thank you very much for yes, this honor. Thank you.